Hello, everybody. Hello. Chapter 4. Yeah, legitimate before, reactions. Yeah, before we start, though, I'd like to send out a message to Marmadouche. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can just go straight to hell. Is that it? Yeah, no, 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 just stop trying to fit in small things. You don't belong in those things. Okay. I think the car is too small for you and you are too large, Marmadouche. Okay. Okay, I think I'm good. Good? You I, vent I, that all I, out? Uh, okay, who's doing yellow text? Uh, let us continue. Ruby reemerges into the room with a cell. Tom is here. Greet Tom. Ask him if he has seen Red. Ask him how his eyes slash stomach are feeling. Tom says his stomach is feeling much better, but his eye is in severe pain. He doesn't know who Red is, but he does say that if you mean that person keeps smiling. Yes, he saw him. Red let Tom out of the room he was trapped in just a few minutes ago. Tom came out to look for Ruby. Tom is glad to see Ruby. He says he thought she might be dead. Ask to look at Tom's eye. Tom hesitantly agrees to let Ruby take a look at his eye. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my! Tom shakes Ruby gently by the shoulder. What? He asks if she is okay. She just sort of blanked on him for a moment there. Wait, what just happened? I honestly don't know. That... Uh, that job, uh, uh. Ask Tom to walk to the other side of the room. She thinks she sees something. Tom tells Ruby there's no way he's walking across the room, as he doesn't want to fall into the gap. Tom tells Ruby she must not have noticed it. He says it's understandable, since she obviously hasn't been here for a while. Use Tom's body as a bridge. Ask Tom what has happened in the time she has been gone. Tom explains he's not sick anymore. He took an antidote three days ago. He hasn't seen much since he's been locked in a room, but he says that he's been hearing loud creaking and cracking noises echoing from other rooms. Wait a minute. Three days ago. It's been a while, man. It's been a while. Since the last thing. It's been a long time. Let's not make portal references. Okay. <laughs> They're overdone. Okay, I like that one. I, I do, but... <laughs> Tell Tom to show you where he was locked up. Tom agrees and leads Ruby up the access hatch. That's funny. Tom says the doorway was just open. Wait, things changed. Examine the bin and place... And the place where a locker used to be. Close the Z... <clears throat> Close the hatch! With the computer. Look down the shaft where we push the barrel through. Look at the blobby thing. There's a utilitarian metal hamper here. Something is inside. Ruby decides to get it. One moment. There's a pit in the center of the room, spattered with dried blood. Sitting in the center is a scrap of paper. Ruby will pick that up in just a second, too. The hatch in the southeast corner has a ladder, and looking down, it appears to lead into the cell room below. Something about that fact seems odd. The corner has some sort of strange, smooth, organic growth lashed into two walls on the floor. It looks almost like skin. Ruby picks up a scrap of paper from the shallow pit. Ruby finds a footy sock pajama foot in the hamper, evidently torn from a full set of pajama bottoms and tied off at the, about the ankle. It's slightly heavy. Okay. Untie the footy pajama. Dump out possible contents with care. Inside the footy sock pajama foot, there is a black and white key. Ruby throws away the footy sock pajama foot. Her genre, her genre instinct tells her she won't need it. Why? Why? Who puts keys in a pajama foot? Adventure games. <laughs> Adventure games, yuck fair! Examine the growth more closely, too. Is it full or hollow? Fleshy or what, bro? It's smooth and fleshy. It's like skin. Like we said before. Throw down the southeastern hatch. It looks like we can do it without falling. The second hatch now has a ladder leading down. That wasn't there before. Ruby descends the access hatch and enters the room below. Okay, this is trippy. Wake up. Pull lever. Ruby tries to pull the lever, but something's locking it from moving. It looks like part of the mechanism is missing. Like a thin metal rod about the size of a toothpick. Well, this is really trippy. It's like upside down, man. It doesn't make- what? Okay. 
Okay. Tie the string around the lever and exit the room. Ruby ties a small bit of string to the lever, then climbs back up to the room where she first awoke. Tom's still there, looking the door over in confusion. Oh god, no, he's gonna turn around. Ask Tom how he's doing. Tom oh, says his eye still hurts. Oh, oh! Or rather, it hurts where it's supposed to be. Uh. Tom explains that he lost his eye a while. His. Let me read that again. Tom explains that he lost his eye while he was being dragged off to the room he spent the last few days in. The thing that brought him here did it. Ruby must not have noticed. Just. Ruby must just not have noticed between her flashes and distractions. Wait a minute. It's the thing that brought him here. What? Uh. Uh. uh, uh brought him to the room he was in. Oh. I thought he meant, like, brought him back, so a thing like Red did that. I was all like, DUDE! Red! Uncalled for! Jesus. Great text. Okay, yeah. Ask Tom to describe the thing that brought him here, if he remembers. Unfortunately, Tom says he didn't get a good look at whatever dragged him away. He was already sick. He says most of the pain of his eye has gone away by now. Poor Tom's lost eye. Ruby hugs him for comfort. Tom looks like he feels better. Basically, tell Tom what happened to you. Ruby tells Tom what's happened. Tom explains he hasn't been weak and despondent lady lately, and unfortunately can't help with her many details, except that the western door in the room with the big console, and the one that the fish tank door leads to, is the way into the room he was trapped in. They both agree that the only thing to do now is go forward. Explore what was once the hatch! Tom and Ruby both go back down and access hatch to check the Z-hatch. Also, there is a hook in the ground there, but it is not sharp, and it is riveted very firmly to the ground. It's essentially just a heavy-duty eye hook. Examine the symbol now above Z-hatch. Ruby has a feeling she's seen this somewhere before. Examine the black panel thingy. Then, go through the hatch if the panel isn't interesting. It's some sort of movable wall panel, but it wasn't, won't budge. It must be remotely controlled. Ruby and Tom both head through the Z-hatch. Is that a, a tail or her ear? Oh. Is that her ear? Yes. Yeah, Ruby and Tom emerge in the back room. In the small closet to the east, on a shelf, there is a large metal safe. Instead of a combination lock, it is a spherical indentation about as big as Ruby's fists. Oh. Ooh, ooh, like put a the eye in it. Put the eye in it. The room is also quite clean. Put the eye in it. See what is around the safe shelves, examine the bowl, but examine the lock more closely. The shelves are bare, the light bulb is on, looking unremarkably harsh. The lock is simply a spherical indentation. There is nothing more significant about the socket to speak of, that's all there is to it. Use key on safe? Ruby uses the black and white key on the wall cabinet. Inside the wall cabinet, Ruby finds another paper scrap. She also recovers an old-fashioned black leather medi medicine bag. Use it on Tom, inspect medicine bag. Ruby can't open the medicine bag. There's a tiny padlock of surprising strength, keeping it closed. Bullshit. Go East Springtown. Ruby heads west, remember the view was reversed on entering the back room, and now that the hatch is much larger, she is able to take Tom with her into the side room behind the couch. <sighs> that dummy is looking at us again. Ask Tom to put his hand in the water tank. Press the button on it. Considering it's a giant blender, Ruby decides not to ask Tom to put his hand inside. Wait a minute, where'd the purple drink go? The window between the rooms is now sealed with heavy plastic, perhaps to avoid breaking. The electrical panel has been covered up by a protective plate and marked with a symbol for electricity. There's an electrical outlet visible here. Uh, is that the hatch under the window? A little hatch, maybe? Can it be opened? Uh... The mail slot-style drawer between the rooms, which Ruby has used before, is now empty. It's also clean. Examine the three thingy. The symbol looks familiar. Ruby remembers seeing that one, too. If it gives nothing importance, head back to dummy room with Tom. Ruby and Tom head back to the now bisected room, and then the dummy room. As soon as Ruby re-enters the bisected room, Z hatch inexplicably slams shut. Tom is sealed on the opposite side of the wall from Ruby. Oh, God damn it! Again, this is getting kind of old, bro. Go to the console upstairs and re-enters the hatch 211, brah. Ruby returns upstairs. Oh, God! Oh, wait. There is a question mark there. That I missed. Oh, God. <sighs> Cast magic missile at the darkness. Yes, yes, do that. The person behind the door tosses a small, thin metal rod onto the floor. Oh, damn it! The door closes suddenly. Why? 
Ruby recovers the thin metal rod. Check on Tom. Ruby can't check on Tom. He's sealed within the Z behind the. Z He's sealed behind the hatch, and the terminal isn't working. It won't even light up. Well, go back to the lever handle thing and p put the rod back in place and give that fucker a tug. Ruby climbs down and replaces the metal rod into the lever. Ruby pulls the lever up, only to find it is far more slack than she realized. Something on the room moves in response to the pulling of the lever, but Ruby can't really see it from here. On the way up the ladder, press the second button from the top. Ruby releases the lever and sl snaps back up, down, into place. Something in the room moves again. Pull it tight and tie one of the rung, tie it to one of the rungs on the ladder with the string. The thick cord easily snaps the flimsy string. Ruby attempts to press the second button from the top, but it's been mashed in and broken. It looks like someone struck it hard with something, or else they don't know their finger strength. <laughs> I don't know my finger strength, smashes key. Bring lever up the ladder with you. Is there fucking sounds somewhere on your mic? I swear to God, man. Your sounds are freaking me out. It might be my chair. Yeah, uh, your chair can suck a dick. If it has a mouth. Does it? No. Really? Damn it. Does your chair have a mouth? <laughs> yeah. That's not normal. <laughs> Wait, what? All chairs have mouths. No. Your chair has a mouth. Okay, fuck off, Ben. I know chairs have mouths. You can't tell me different. Bring Lever up the ladder with you. If there is still a black head back down the side of the room with the eye and hook, and that Lever's the eye hook, yeah. Ruby heads upstairs. There sure is a lot of slack here. Ruby hooks the lever his handle onto the key hook. <laughs> oh, it's slack. Ruby retrieves the crowbar. Pry open the hatch to try to save Tom. The thick metal shutters on the hatch are way too strong for Ruby to pry open. Smash open little metal lock with the crowbar. The lock is surprisingly resilient, but Ruby ha knew this already. Maybe it's not so surprising. Use crowbar on the board up hole. <gasps> Delicious plank pulling action! Ruby rapidly returns to the boarded up hull, but she's not strong enough to pry the boards free. Her girlish figure is just not up to the task. She very rapidly returns to the other side. How considerate of her. Go to room to the left. Ruby heads west. Ruby enters the dummy room. Try to remove the rope from the dummy. Ruby tried before. She just can't manage it. Inspect new plaque under trauma part on the wall. There is some sort of large black and white painting on the wall. Beneath it, there is a plaque in a language Ruby cannot understand. So wait, is Ruby going insane? You don't know. Prob- Maybe it's like, like, everything that was happening so far has been normal, but she's just been, like, thinking everything's fucked up. It's been three days. Yeah. Shit happens in three days. Me red queen it all up just to fuck with Ruby. <laughs> that would be a dick move. <laughs> like, I am so going to get her. Queen's up a, Queen's up a shitload of boys. There was a cr there's a question mark. Oh, yeah, there is. Vo Votum Priscus Perp Soper, roughly translated ancient prayer, never-ending deep sweep. This is all a dream, isn't it? Check the thing under the mail slot. It appears to be a button diagram, similar to the one that was upstairs in the control room. It seems to have a different layout. Perhaps it coincides with the one in the ro other room somehow. Yeah, Red's definitely fucking with her. Use crowbar and jam filing cabinet. Luckily, the cabinet is not jammed very hard, and the crowbar makes short work of it. Inside, Ruby finds a tiny key. Teensy tiny key. Try key on a teensy tiny padlock. Go. The medicine bag doesn't have anything that would help Tom inside anyway. Ruby unlocks it with a teensy tiny key and recovers a paper scrap and a very sharp scalpel. Try checking the deposit box again. The deposit box is still empty. Check the clock on the wall. Nothing has changed. Oh wait, those are the symbols she's been seeing all over the fucking place. Wait there. I get it. <laughs> Try the sink. <laughs> the faucet still doesn't work. There's no water at all. You scap on biological growth in the locker room. Ruby returns to the locker room. 
Ruby does her best to carve away at the fleshy growth and uncovers the cubby, cubby hole behind it. The eyeball, though strangely oversized, is not nearly as big as Ruby's fist. It won't fit in the spherical shape. Safe lock. Uncomfortably, Ruby picks up the eye and stores it away. Why would you pick it up? Ruby cleverly condenses her inventory. Examine the panel on the wall next to the closed doorway. It's a four-digit password panel. Above is a diagram of a happy fish. It appears to be powered down at the moment. Attached to it is an extendable power cord. One 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 two one one two three. Do that, Ruby. Do it. Enter code late. Get pulling and let's see how far this fucker goes. Ruby pulls the cord to the furthest location she can walk to. Looks like there is plenty of slack. Tom arrives on the other side of the thick window. Wait, how'd he get there? He's stuck on that side. No, I thought it was sucking. Oh, because Z Hatch and that room are connected. Yup. God, I am just. It's so hard to keep track of all of this. I'm pretty sure there's a map at one point to help you get your bearings straight. Especially when they, like, just split in half and then turn it upside down. Yup. <laughs> like, thank you, writer. You're so helpful in making me understand this. Yup. <laughs> Try to pass the cable through the mail slot. That would never work. The mail slot is specifically designed to only open to one side of the wall at a time. Send the key to Tom, and try to ask if it, if it's his for no re real reason. That's terrible. Even if the eye was his, it's past the point where it could be reattached, even if there were proper medical facilities available. Wait, you have the Ruby medical isn't... bag. Huh? The medical bag. Th they said there was nothing useful in the medical bag. Oh, fuck. Ruby is not so cruel as to do that to Tom for no reason. Smash window with crowbar! The thick window is made of some sort of very resilient plexiglass. It refuses to give. Before a monster derby thing smashed through it. Also, if my if my red is like just fucking with ruby thing is correct, he pr he just probably went out to the store and bought some plexiglass, and all of this is just like two feet away from some suburban town. <laughs> and it he's painted on a mural of the fish. Nice. <laughs> and then it, and then all of this shows up on punked. Yo, you just got punked. <laughs> Everyone switches channels. And, and then the Ruby, and then the Ruby just like starts freaking going insane, punching the shit out of things. Punked, punked. Okay. Search for an outlet on the side. Then. Are we strong enough to move the do not open box? This box is sealed tight. Ruby's girlish figure isn't enough to force the do not open box open. That's why it says do not open. Flash Tom. He'll be through the glass before you can say pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Tom if he has anything in his pocket. Scaps luck. Sadly, this time Tom is carrying nothing. No tap, no can opener, no contents. Send Tom the crowbar and see if he has his, and see if he and his manly physique can open the grate to the hatch. Ruby sends the crowbar to Tom through the drop slot. Oh. Tom receives the crowbar. <laughs> this weapon of potential destruction. <laughs> Tom feels his manliness surging back. His manly physique is at its peak. He poses triumphantly to celebrate. Tom feels like he could do some serious bashing here. At least. To most things that aren't specifically designed to stand up to bashing. We haven't even looked at the eye in the room till Tom to inspect it closely. It's just a painting. Tom doesn't see anything particularly destroyable about it. Oh shit, man. Tom, you looking at that wrong. That shit demonic, bro. You best be smashing that right now. <laughs> Fry off the lightning bolt panel. Tom would rather not be electrocuted by prying off the panel on the high voltage panel in that other room. Destroy the blank teller self thing. It's the only thing that allows Tom and Ruby to pass t items. They may need it. See, hot trip here is open. What are you talking about? It's obviously closed. Okay. Stop getting Tom's hopes up. This game, this is just messing with me right now. Red is the worst. This is just. This. It was right there, man! I saw it with my own eyes. I saw that the hatch open. Or the artist forgot to make it closed. Can you imagine? 
That's probably what it was. <laughs> the R is like, oh sh like somebody says, oh this hatch is open, and he's just like, oh shit. And he's yeah. like, nope, it wasn't open, you be wrong. I don't know what yo smoking. Anyway. Uh <laughs> something needs to be smashed, damn it. Take out them shelves in the closet. Mind the light. Fuck yeah! Tom goes to work smashing up the shelves for no good reason and carefully avoids breaking the light bulb. Then he decides what the heck and smashes the light bulb anyway. It's very satisfying. Smash sofa. Tom's empty inanimate object bloodlust has subsided. Besides, the couch is so utilitarian, nothing about smashing it would probably be any fun. Oh, come on, Tom. Pry open the hatch! The hatch is so strong it severed that monster in half earlier. Tom's efforts would be wasted against its thick steel shutters. The hatch is a badass. Pry shift on the walls, starting with that painting. You guys are really reaching. The painting won't come off. It's inset into the wall. Insert many stupid ideas here. No. No! To third, an idea. You're only flooding the thread with pointless comments. I'm sure Tom heard you the first time. Gosh, you guys. I mean, jeez. Jesus! Have Tom hug Weaver. Switch back to Ruby. Go with a set of buns alongside the wire near the Weaver. Have Tom look up the next step on game FAQs. Ruby decides to get off her fluffy white button and goes to the buttons again. Ruby, get off your fluffy ass! Which button should Ruby press? Think carefully, pressing random buttons may not be wise. Ruby is pretty sure she remembers seeing a diagram earlier. Top one. Are you sure? Okay, don't say you weren't warned. Ruby presses the top button. Ruby hears soft, distant sounds of running water. Nothing else seems to happen. Press button four. Ruby taps button four. There's a loud rumbling sound from somewhere in another room, but otherwise, no visible change. Ruby decides it. Shit. Ruby decides to return to check on Tom. <laughs> He's okay, but there's a weird clanking sound nearby, like something moving around in metal. No, 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 no. Tells Tom um, she's pressed some buttons. No. Tom says a minute or two ago, something started making noises from the pipe overhead. Every 30 seconds or so, a clanking, clattering sound echoes in the pipes, like no. something passing through there. Oh, God. There's like, is there a spider thing in there? I bet that's what's happening. It's going to be a spider thing, Ben. Am I right, Ben? I honestly don't remember the order of Ben from here on out. Yeah, Ben kind of sucks. I remember things that do happen. I don't remember in what order they happen. Yeah, all you remember is what happens to Red, the last thing that happens to him. No, I remember more than that. I just don't remember what order things happen in. But I know things happen. Try breaking open the pipe and seeing what it is. The pipes here are all shielded with thick metal plates. Tom wisely moves to the back room where the pipe is exposed. Tom lets fly with the crowbar and assaults the old pipe. For better or for worse, the pipe is smashed wide open. Just in time, the rumbling sound is coming this way again. Oh man, yo! A perfect glass sphere comes rumbling oh. down the shaft and lands softly unharmed on the soft yet utilitarian couch. Oh. Use it on the safe. Tom unlocks the safe using the glass sphere and the safe lock socket. Inside the safe, Tom finds some sort of peculiar wooden disc. Oh, I thought the wooden disc was supposed to be in there, but I was wrong. The, the, the wooden disc was supposed to be in... The thing that you get- shit, I don't even know what I'm saying. I can't talk. You really can't. <laughs> yeah. I can normally talk, but when I'm trying to talk about Ruby Quest... Just all goes down the drain. It just all... just dies. <laughs> Go back into the tech room, pit disc in the mail slot, and send it to Ruby. Tom passes a strange disc to Ruby, who looks a bit startled to see it. Ruby sets the wooden disc into the peg in the slot-like device. It fits perfectly. To which symbol should Ruby point the disc? Top one. Ruby points the dial disc to the top symbol. The sound of sliding metal comes from nearby. Just as Ruby had hoped, the symbol must have opened a zhatch! Tom enters the room, looking pleased to see Ruby. He carries the extendable power cord Ruby forgot in the other room. Hug Tom! Ruby hugs Tom. Tom goes for a step further. Oh, shit, man. Oh, ho! Oh, sh kiss him back. He earned it, brah. Hooray, kiss back. Ruby? Ruby returns to the clock. Oh. She turns the dial away from the top symbol, and she can hear the zatch slam down again. Okay, now kiss back. Rejection. Flick the dial to the right. All right, explain to Tom that you're just shy bunny, 
And when you both get out of this, you'll have more time for that and more. Ruby turns the dial to the bottom still. Oh, man! Fighting metal can be heard through the plexiglass. Oh, wait. I just forgot something. Hold on. I'm being retarded. I thought, like, something actually happened. But I was being retarded. Yes. I thought, I thought that string just was on the dummy, but it's been on the dummy for, like, the past forever. Yeah, it's been on the dummy since... Uh... Uh, because I thought, like, something came out and grabbed it, like, Oh, man, man, it's coming home! And nope. then... I was wrong. Been there since Tom entered. Yeah, what's wrong with me? A lot. <laughs> I'm not even paying attention. I'm just reading the text and just, like, smoking weed. JK. I kid. I jest. Anyway. I use acid. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Look at Dom. Govern him. It was at this point that Ruby realized that Tom is the one, and she threw herself at him, kissing passionately. Why the sad faces, ya? Yeah! Turned out at the top. Go on the other side, leave Tom behind, ask Tom to turn the dial at the other bottom again, yeah. Ruby uses the dial to open the hatch, and heads towards the room on the other side of the glass. Oh god, look at him! You've torn his heart! As Ruby leaves, have her tell... Tom, that she loves him. Do it. What? What? Oh, sh Red Eye, better Photoshop that! Oh, man! Ruby's head is killing her. Oh! Ah! Oh. What? What? This is why real reactions are the best, people. What? I... <laughs> Shit just got triple Lovecraftian. <laughs> this isn't real, Ruby. Wake up again. Oh, no. Mind blown. Frog. And then SpongeBob screaming. You should probably read. Ruby wipes the blood off her forehead. Tom didn't see. Good. Tom... Knocks on the glass. Press your hand against the glass. Show that you are not well. No. Tom can't know. Tom, please turn the dial to the bottom symbol. Ruby gets Tom's attention, then gets him to switch the dial to the bottom long enough for her to open that small slot in the wall and retrieve the fourth paper scrap. She signals Tom and switches it back again, opening the hat. Turns to the dummy room. Tom begins to apologize for his earlier rash action. Ruby quickly dismisses it. It's fine, don't worry about it. Yeah, it's fine. You know, fucking, uh, I just came out of my head, but I'm good! Everything is gonna be alright. Ask Tom to return to out in a symbol. Get out. Have Tom plug in keypad. Ruby reopens the hatch. Tom returns through it to the other side and plugs in the extendable power cord from the digital clock upstairs. Ruby and Tom return to the top level and enter the code into the powered up terminal. This is it! Hell yeah! Not quite as planned. Damn it. Tom and Ruby make a boring excursion back downstairs through the hatch, unplug the cord, pull it back to the proper side, Wait. change the dial to the symbol in the water, then climb back uh, upstairs. Dude, it's black but it's very boring, so let's just skip all that and get <sighs> to the good part. It's what Ruby would want. She doesn't mess around. I was so scared like I was gonna have it pop out for a sec. Okay. Prepare to swing crowbar and walk into the doorway. Tom and Ruby prepare themselves, but there's no one on the other side. The monitor system appears to have been destroyed. Oh, Red, you cheeky little dick waffle. Nothing to do now, but use cro cross peg on cross shaped slot. Ruby finally inserts the cross peg into the cross shaped recess in the wall. The panel on the wall transforms before Ruby's eyes, folding open and revealing a small ladder of broad pegs, leading up to a newly opened hatch in the ceiling. How many rooms must there be? Climb it. Climb up. Ah, oh, what? Ruby and Tom climb the ladder up the new hatch in the ceiling. It is no mystery whose home this is. Oh my god. What? 
He probably saw them kiss, then broke the monitor in rage. <laughs> that is an unsettling... That is unsettlingly possible, considering the time between when the monitors were fine and when they were broken. Analyze object on the tenth thing. And then the blood, blood all on the wall. There's a cereal box under Red's tent. Are you serious? <laughs> Among endless scrawls of illegible feathered writings, there's some sort of crude, arcane, circular diagram, and in the center, a relatively fresh blood stain, probably from some time in the last few days. Ah, uh, my earbud, my earbud. <laughs> Very hard. My earbud! Help me, Ben! My earbud, Ben! Ah! Don't hear me. You have two. Oh, okay, yeah. Open cereal box. There is very sugary cereal inside, but there is very little left. Something rattles inside the box, which promises a prize inside. Oh, son of a bitch. I don't trust Tom. I think he's a monster thing, and that's why he's so violent. And the eye went missing and shizzle. <laughs> Fo shizzle, yo! He tried to take the advantage of us just a moment ago. He's not. He's just toying with us. T. Underscore T. You're likely correct, but I don't want it to be true. Equals, open parentheses. I do actually feel that, comma. I really expect Tom to turn on us, or be a monster inhabiting Tom, knowing that we're all nice and naive and shit. Maybe they both turn out to be monsters and turn out to be each other and turn on each other simultaneously. Semi uh, then just, just the other is just like them must blush and shy poly. Just follow. Something falls to the floor amid Red's fevered writings from the cereal box. Teeth, guys. I don't think he can really tear out th our throats anymore. It's paddling time. Are oh, those... wait. Oh, those are you. Oh, wait, dude, dude. That means that Red is the one that dissected that body and put it up there. Because of the scribblings on the wall. Shit, man. I just realized shit. You got shit to read. It just went together in my mind, like click, click. I shit, know man. things now. Sudden realization, bitch. Are those teeth? Examine them to determine their na true nature. They're teeth, all right. <laughs> Ruby Look. pockets the handful of teeth. I think Tom explains he was trapped behind this door. Red let him out, so Red must be in there now. Oh shit. The door is locked, but Red is on the other side. He might let them in, Tom suggests. After all, he let Tom out. It's a trap! My <laughs> friend here would like a word for, for you, Tom. <laughs> Knock on the door. Tom, Tom knocks. Red's voice comes from the other side, raspy and strangely excited. And then he's a teddy bear? Hold on now, friends. Red can't j let just anyone through the door. This door. You have to prove your family. Part of Red's special family. Oh, come on! Say, ask the questions, doorkeeper. I'm not afraid. If you want to improve your part of Red's very special family, you'll have to solve this riddle for me. I watch, I tear, I devour and bleed. All these fall as liquids to feed. Now, why won't you go bring good all Red the answer and prove you're part of Red's special family? The answer is an eye. Wrong! Wrong! Now scram! Sorry, I just had to do that. <laughs> we have nothing to do now but open up the do not open box. Tom decides it's time to get down to business and defeat the Huns. Warning labels are for chumps. Stand aside, ladies. It's time for manly physique to prove its worth and damn the consequences. Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. Hm. Oh, what? There is a desiccated corpse inside the box. Its skin has become paper thin and yellowed, half transparent, clinging to its thin skeleton. What the hell? It looks strangely familiar. It's Ruby. Long ears, long feet, three eyes, mother of God, it's Ruby. The corpse looks like it's grinning, though. A toothy grin at that. Oh, hi, Ruby. What's in the dish next to it? Tom finds something in the box. Tom retrieves the bowl of clawed fingers. <laughs> Ruby is just like, Gah! Look at her eyes. Turn on the sink! The faucet pours red liquid. Actually, Tom's not that surprised. <laughs> yeah, Tom is used to this shit now. There's no corpse, or Tom would have reacted. 
ask him, oh my god, ask him what's in the box. Tom says a bowl of severed fingers is certainly disgusting, but no worse than some other things they've both seen. Also, tell him that she sees her own dead body in the grave. Don't mention the third eye, though. Might make him jealous. Well, if only having him one of... Oh my god. Take the blood, eye, teeth, and fingers, and stick them in the blender, and get the god-awful smoothie. Tom and Ruby head to the maintenance area, and after a gruesome blending, they whip up the god-awful smoothie. Law, send that... Law, send that nasty shit to Red through that tube. Take it to Red. The door is already open. Perhaps he knew Ruby and Tom were coming. Oh. Ah! Yup. Ah! Yup. Oh my god, yes. Never gonna <laughs> give you up. Never gonna let you down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yup. Yup. We're gonna see you next time, folks.